Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays, Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today, I have an incredible uh, episode, session, whatever it is that you want to call, but I think today's talk is going to be amazing. I am so happy to have a friend, I like to call him a friend, a colleague. Um, some, today's episode is going to be very logical, very emotional. So if you are ready for a beautiful wave of being in the ocean and riding the waves of up and down, today is the day for you to sign in and be on a ride for healing within. So with, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest, Robert Wall. Come on in, Robert, hello. Hello, how are you, Lisa? I'm wonderful, dear, how are you? Fantastic, thank you. So uh, thank you for being my guest today. It's a special, I, I think it's a special day with everything that is going on in life. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I've mentioned this before, but I love the writing right in the back of your head oh, and yeah. what you have. Yeah. And it says, I haven't been everywhere, but it's on my list. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, traveling is a very important thing in my life and my wife's life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, rather than, here, here's the one thing that I've learned over the years, and that is, the new TV that I buy, we won't be talking about two or three years from now, right? But every single vacation or trip I've ever been on in my entire life with my wife and my children, we still discuss to this day. And so we love traveling, we love building those memories and they last forever. Well, isn't it more of experiences that it's embedded in our memory and we talk about like holding grandma's hand or going for something? It's all experiences. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely it is. And, and as a matter of fact, it's interesting because those experiences are what nurture our mindset, right? Mm -hmm. and so when we starve ourselves of those experiences and we're only focused on the issues in life, then we really are holding ourselves back from growing and actually, you know, building these everlasting memories. So. so true. So for my audience, if you allow me, I'd like to share, even though I put it in the bio, mm -hmm. I love there's something, well, to introduce Robert Wall, um, has been a professional business consultant, coach, a business owner. He has bought and sold businesses, crafted and provided turnover and services for multiple and multitude of businesses. And I like to say that you've even worked for Fortune 500s, but in the last three years, you've changed from the traditional consulting to making a difference like you see, you are the brand before your business. Yes, absolutely. And we've talked about this and mm -hmm. I love it. Um, share something about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, so here's an inter interesting thing. Um, 25 years, I've been actually a business coach and a consultant. So mm -hmm. 25 years this year. And again, as you stated, it was all in that traditional sense, helping businesses with their operations, with their training, um, with executive leadership, et cetera. And one thing that I found to be true across the board, it wasn't necessarily the, the businesses or the large corporations that I was passionate about. Mm. It's actually the experience that I was having with the individual sitting right across the desk from me. And so it was always about the people and that, that experience and that transformation and actually seeing how I could work with individuals and to pull people together um, around the table and, and quite frankly, just to build teams and to see those results. And so because of that, I started to do some one-on-one -on -one business consulting. Gosh, this goes back maybe about 14 years ago. And um, in the last few years, we started to really drill it down into the niche of personal branding. 
Mm. Because the one thing that I found is absolutely true across the board. When I would sit with clients and they would tell me that they're struggling with overcoming some type of a goal uh, that they have, uh, whether it's financial, whether it's just the outcome of being able to push through and, and experience breakthrough, whether they're uh, a home-based business just starting out or an actual Fortune 500 company, and I'm talking to an executive, if they don't know at the end of the day, and this is kind of common across the board, if they didn't know who they were, what they were truly driven, right? What, 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 what drives them? What are their passions? What's their purpose? So who they are, what it is they're passionate about. So what type of product or service do they want to bring to the market? And then to whom they want to serve that product or service, right? So if they couldn't figure out yeah. those three elements, um, then quite frankly, they were never going to experience all of the success that they could be experiencing. So we started to focus on personal branding and then we took it to a whole nother level. Um, Lisa, most personal branders, they just focus on image and they focus on um, obviously execution of some type of a marketing strategy. We do that as well, but we really start with the individual. And so we spend a great deal of time, probably 75% of my time is spent around heart set and mindset. Exactly. By covering those two things, the rest is easy. Well, isn't it for anything in our life, no matter what it is that we want to do, it comes down to our core belief. Yes. And when we, what we believe in is what we attract. Mm. So I fun. know, right? Yeah. So um, we met on Network of Influences. Thank you to Manny Lopez. Uh, the guy is a gem. He is a pure essence of joy. Absolutely. and a walking talking marketing person yeah. and but he comes off so naturally it's because of his belief system and what it is that he wants to do and say it's like everyone is talking to me and putting this what is your core belief well my core belief it comes back to how can i help you heal within and realize that you matter what i do is help folks overcome anxiety and get over their trauma oh. and believe in themselves so it's that you matter yes um but branding is so much bigger and i know today is not about branding and yet i know you have a gift and all my audience everyone watching robert is gracious enough to offer a gift and we'll talk about it at the end mm -hmm. today it was about you know, after we talked last month, it, it, we just had this beautiful synergy together. Mm -hmm. And the work that I do is helping helping individuals. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it is one-on-one -on -one or even a group that I do, overcome obstacles, yeah. internal obstacles, emotional and mental, not so much the physical, of course, physical also. Mm -hmm. But when we talked about the message of what you shared as a speaker, mm -hmm. um, it hit home. And then after our talk, I said, may I share something? And from there, it just sparked is, you know, men and women, mm -hmm. I think we cope with um, pain, loss, and it could be business and it could be personal in a whole different way. Yes. Um, and I've learned doing the work that men are taught from young age to be strong and, you know, get over it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's right? unfortunate. So would you please share that part? Yeah, absolutely. And it is unfortunate because that's still happening uh, today, right? So mm. build it's programmed in us from many, many generations ago. Um, and unfortunately, it's still happening. But what we're starting to find out is that being vulnerable, vulnerability um, is not weakness, right? It's strength. Strength. And, um, uh, but that wasn't, you know, the way we were taught many, many years ago. And so, yeah, I mean, just to kind of paint a Kind of a broad stroke picture yeah. uh, growing up as a child i mean that's you know i'm an athlete 
Um, I've been in martial arts since I was, I think, 10 years old, uh, competing nationally. And, mm-hmm. and then, of course, uh, as I told you, I went off into the military for six years. Right. And during that time, I got into boxing and all these these macho, bravo things, right? And, and we're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be tough, both mentally and physically. And those are good attributes. The problem is, is understanding and knowing when to turn them on and off. And um, it's very, very similar. We're seeing a lot of this, even in the military now, they're starting to take different approaches to handling and coaching soldiers even through this because of PTSD and other things that are actually happening, right? Um, And so, yes, you know, we're told not to cry, right? As, as, As young children, especially boys, you know, you don't cry. Um, you have to be tough, uh, all these things, because we're told that if we do those things, if we become vulnerable in any situation, then it's a sign of weakness. And I have found that true transformation doesn't actually start or even begin, I mean, at all, until you become vulnerable. Mm. You have to identify what those pain points are in your life. And then once you're able to identify them, then you can allow them to heal and turn into scars. It doesn't right. mean that they're gone. And so I will, uh, would you like me to share my story just briefly about? Exactly. That's what I was just going to ask you if if you would share because it is such a vulnerable thing. Mm. And, and yet it's a very powerful, powerful experience. And please. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my entire life, and I'll keep it as short as I can, but my entire life, um, you know, I just felt like, I've always been driven since even a very young age. I started my own business before I was even out of high school, and I've continued to to own and manage and operate businesses ever since. And quite frankly, uh, in my earlier 20s, I had a great deal of success that I experienced with business, so at a very young age. And so at that time in my life, I was in a different place, both mentally, physically, and spiritually. Um, I believed obviously in a higher power. I believed in all the right things, but I also felt that I was untouchable. I felt as though it didn't matter what type of obstacle I encountered, I would be able to overcome that obstacle. I could conquer. Yeah, I could conquer it because I was taught and I was trained to think this way. And again, as I stated, those are great attributes if you understand how to turn them on and off. And so, um, in uh, July, on July 5th, 2001, my entire world shifted. Mm. Um, right when I thought I was uh, untouchable and that nothing could stop me, um, we, uh, we had the opportunity to give life to um, uh, my third child. Her name is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ann. And... Um, when Elizabeth was born, she first of all, she was born still. And so I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen there. The doctors put a lot of attention to her. And after a few minutes, uh, they were able to uh, basically you know, recover her. She went into intensive care. Uh, but the transformation, or I should say the beginning of what was the transformation, and I didn't even recognize it yet, happened 10 minutes later when they called me out into the hall. Um, I went out into the hallway and they said, Mr. Wall, we're not quite sure what we're looking at here, but it's something that we've never seen uh, Mm. in this hospital. And this is a hospital that's been around for 150 years. And uh, so the fact that they actually said this, it it obviously was real concerning. Um, And they said, regardless of what it is, we're still trying to figure some things out. We can tell you for a fact based on just some quick observation that your daughter is terminal and my entire world just froze um all of my dreams all of my hopes the goals that i had set for the very next day all of these things it changed in in an absolute second and um and so if anything comes from this we know that life right life is very short we see it each and every day we experienced it these last few months um, life is precious. Life is extremely precious. And so obviously, um, I had to cope with the, the particular situation 
and I don't have time to, to tell you all about their of emotional roller coaster, but um, I felt and experienced every single um, spectrum of, of emotion. The change and what I really want the audience to understand is that through this process, and Elizabeth, thank, thank the Lord, was able to stay with us for two and a half years, even though they thought it would only be weeks. Mm -hmm. And so through that experience, although at the time in the midst of it, I was still grateful, but also felt this burden, you know, on my life because my whole life had, had changed, right? My business suffered, my relationship suffered um, at that particular time. And all these things were kind of weighing me down. And so the transformation actually didn't happen in the midst of her being in my care. It actually happened after she had passed away and she passed away in October of uh, 2003. So she was two and a half years old. God bless her. And, yeah. And, um, and, and so through that process of grief, uh, as we talked about earlier, kind of segueing into that, I felt like I had to carry all of this burden on my shoulders, right? Taking care of a spouse, taking care of two other children during this time. I had to be the strong one, uh, which also meant I couldn't be emotional. And mm -hmm. so through this whole process, I kept a lot of that in. And I can tell you that, you know, bottling up your emotions is not healthy whatsoever. So whether we're it talking about- It affects your body, it affects your mind, it affects everything. Absolutely. Um, and so uh, I, I came into this point during this journey. It was about two months after um, she had passed that I really went into a deep depression because I started to finally release some of this emotion. And so it was a little bit of everything, right? It was, it was anger. It was also relief. Um, and it was deep, deep sadness. Mm. I felt as though this was one thing in my life I had no control over and I could not save her. Um, and I felt extremely weak in that moment. Um, but here's the thing, Lisa, at the end of the day, whenever we're going through any problem, any type of grief in life, what I realized was I was focusing on the wrong things. I was asking the wrong questions. Right. Even in my relationship with God, I was asking him the wrong questions. I was, was it ever, was it ever why me? Absolutely. Why yeah. me? How did this happen? I'm a good person. I'm a good right. parent. I'm a good spouse. I'm a good Christian. All of these things, right? And, and many of you are probably asking yourself the same exact things now when you go through certain um, hurdles and obstacles in life. Then I started to actually reflect on everything. And all it took was an, a phone call took a phone call um, that I had received from a therapist that was part of her hospice care. Mm. This, this um, hospice care um, uh, nurse, she actually had taken care of her for a full year. She would come every week and just do some muscle therapy and just help her stretch right. her muscles um, because my, my daughter was completely immobile. And that's a point actually I wanna make is my daughter couldn't see she couldn't talk, she couldn't walk, she couldn't even crawl, she couldn't even hold things with her limbs. She was pretty much completely immobile, but she could hear. And because she could hear, you could see expressions on her face. And so you knew that she was, you know, she was um, stimulated aware by these things. Yes. And uh, so going back to the hospice care worker, she had called and said, I just want you to know, that, um, you know, I, I've been an atheist my entire life. Mm -hmm. And even in care of others, it was just the right thing to do. But I never really believed in God until I took care of your daughter. And <laughs> she said, your daughter had the face of an angel. And when I took care of her, she responded so. And she touched me in a way spiritually that I, I can never explain um, without words, without sight, without mobility. She had the ability to create a connection, a spiritual connection mm. with, with the 
this lady and she was able to um quite frankly it was her testimony right she was she was able to do testimony just in her presence of being here on earth and that as i started to reflect is when everything changed in my life and i started to realize that if my little girl that couldn't talk couldn't walk if she could change the lives of others on earth if she could deliver a testimony that could transform the existence the mindset the heart set of others right then what were my excuses right and so that really was the, the day that i realized that if she could do it and i have all of my abilities then i have no excuses and i need to get out there and do the same thing and so i've used that pain as the catalyst it was a joy it was a blessing i am so grateful right that god gave me her to be in my care um because now she is she's she's everything that i put into all things and so um if we start to become more grateful and we focus on the things that we've overcome in life exactly yeah we start realizing that like like that flat tire on the side of the highway right it really is insignificant right or the fact that maybe a bill you're a little behind financially in something um you know think of all the ways that you can overcome that that situation rather than just focusing on the burden and that in itself i try to apply that to not only my own life but obviously the people that i'm working with as well so such a beautiful message um i am a true believer and i i really say this is my bs because it's my belief system that things do not happen to us they happen for us every single experience uh i've had my share of helping others and going through my own experiences and i think each and every one the way i say evoke it embrace it so that you can evolve yes. that entire transition is every experience has added to my experience or knowledge so that i can help someone else and say this has helped me become who i am today so true so true and in fact we're told and we're programmed to bury those feelings right? right it's just like with any type of grief that you've experienced uh, we're supposed to just become stronger and to get you know you hear this at times to get over it mm, get over exactly it. get over it move yeah. on and and that that isn't the case because quite frankly something that's holding you back today can actually be deeply rooted it can be something that's happened to you 10 15 20 years ago in your life and you don't actually realize that that is what is what's anchoring you towards success and so um so i say again to identify those things right to journal these right. things to think about all the stories of your life that's what branding truly is it's understanding that at the end of the day people buy from you, you. They, buy, they buy you right you are the package that comes with whatever product or service you're offering in life that includes relationships as well exactly um, and so if you can focus on you focus on your stories the things that have made you think of all the things that you've overcome in life identify what those deep rooted pains are and as i stated earlier it's time to focus on those things to heal let them heal and then allow those scars to be your catalyst for great things to come right of course it's um it what i also share is express it to free it mm -hmm. because until the time we have not expressed it shared it or written doesn't matter how you express it it's bundled up inside and that's probably one of the biggest ways that i help my clients is doing the hypnotherapy is tapping into that subconscious mind and yet you brought up something so beautiful and profound it's it's that experience has become your catalyst and i think just like Lisa Nichols, like Manny, like Les Brown, you, me, and it doesn't matter even Oprah. Every, it doesn't matter who we are. 
Mm -hmm. um, something is our driver. Right. And it's not from the outside because outside people, outside circumstances are just triggers of what is supposed to hit home and come from the inside. So the flame is from the inside. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Another thing that kind of comes to mind just when you were talking about yeah. that is, again, I'm reflecting kind of back on uh, the topic, you know, of how men like mm. to um, hold our feelings inside and to stay strong. And what I found through all of these experiences is that by me holding on to my emotions and remaining strong uh, to, to put up this front for everyone else around me, that actually only says at the end of the day that I care about me. Me. Because I'm actually not sheltering them, I'm, I'm sheltering self. Right. But when I become vulnerable and completely open, I found so much strength in that. It was the complete opposite of what I ever thought would mm. happen based on the macho bravo person I was growing up, right? And so I realized that the more vulnerable I became and the more I cried over situations, you know, that my why became bigger in life. And by Robert, the way, how did your depression affect you and your wife? I know when it's like putting an armor on, and I'm not even talking about those who uh, put on a weight to protect themselves, but it becomes like this, especially men, it's like this armor. I am strong. I am invisible. You know, you can't hurt me. And yet deep inside they're hurting. But how did having that armor being strong for your wife and children affect your relationship. Yeah. Well, actually, then. Um, well, well, actually, um, that story ends with that. That is an ex-wife. So I'm remarried. Um, I, have, I know you are I'm and happily. And I very happily married. Um, but no, absolutely. And so uh, my ex was doing the same exact thing. Right. And, um, we were both trying to be strong for the children right, for the two children that we had that were obviously healthy and vibrant and full of life. Um, and at the same time, we were completely emotionally voided. Detached. In our, in our relationship, yeah. Um, and so, again, holding those things in. And that's the other thing, going back to why this is so important even in the military, is because right. I experienced this and I saw this. Uh, I, I personally experienced some of that that uh, feeling back then, but uh, by bottling these emotions up, right, by staying strong, all you're, all you're doing is continuously building up that pressure, both internally, mm. mentally, spiritually, and we all know the results of what happens when that explosion <laughs> occurs, right? Um, and that's where you see, you know, abuse in families physically, yes. uh, with spouses, with self, um, with obviously to the, to the point of, of even, you know, suicide and all the other things that come with that. Um, and so it is so important. It is so important to become vulnerable, um, to just release these feelings, to know that all of these things are short lived because if we think back to everything we've ever overcome in life, we were, over, you know, we're here today, right? So we were able to overcome these obstacles exactly and give credit to whomever you want obviously i give credit to god but understand that you know there is a higher power right. that can give you the strength to push through anything as long as you just accept and we are exactly where we are supposed to be it's like when this covid 19 started everybody was complaining in the beginning the first week second week third week they wow. did just didn't know what to do with themselves and now in the, by next week, it will be almost three months. And there are people who say, oh, I'm liking this. Yeah. <laughs> they get to this comfort zone now instead uh, of the others. Yeah, always. Yeah, I've always said one of the keys to success um, is, you know, getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Exactly. Right? Once you can embrace that, uh, then, you know, the problem is, is that we fall into routine so often. We don't want anything to mess up our routine in life. Yeah, don't change. Yeah, yeah. So I know 
through my own experiences, men who used to get angry or frustrated or something like that, they usually walk out or they go to the golf course or they go bowling. So things that are physical and emotions were hard to speak. And today you shared how, because I, I think crying, it's an internal, it's saying internal validation that what I feel, I am crying because of what I feel. It's not what's happening outside. So if you were to give three pointers mm -hmm. um, for our audience, that if this is what you feel, what can we do? Three steps or something. What yeah. would you suggest? Because mine is evoke, embrace, evolve. It's realize yours is just the history and allow history to be history. Yes. And then embrace the reality, the facts, the logic of where you are today so that you can create a new story of your own. Mm, I, I like that. And, and it's so true and, and very similar, actually. Um, you know, I talk a lot about the past, obviously, when I'm dealing with individuals, mm -hmm. sharing my own story, understanding their story. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously things that are derived from the past. And so understanding that the past is there as a, as a true lesson in life, right. right? Both good and bad, the things to embrace and to continue to, to work towards and the things to avoid. But at the same exact time, they, it does not mean that we should be living in the past. Amen. And that's typically what will hold people back from the future. And so I've always found that when you find yourself truly in a frustrating situation and depressed, if you're alone, um, you know, well, first of all, as a coach, I'll just mention that uh, we, so when, we, when you think of like meditation and you think of reflection and, you know, listening to yourself, walking through these things, as a coach, I found that we ourselves are our own worst critics at times, mm -hmm. right? And so we judge of, ourselves worse than anybody else can do. Absolutely. So just using that as an example, uh, one of the tools that I wanted to mention right. is that if you're finding that you're not um, able to, to experience breakthrough and you aren't able to, to shift and, and to grow into a stronger mindset, through your own internal coaching, mm -hmm. um, because again, we are our own worst critic, then you need to find that person, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a best friend, whether it is a coach, whatever that may be, find somebody who is a professional listener, right? Somebody that's gonna truly, you know, you can share your feelings with um, and there, there, there's no judgment placed um, from, from any of these individuals. So that was, kind of going back to that again, um, whenever you find yourself in a very depressed moment, uh, truly share those feelings with someone else. Do not keep them bottled up at all. Right. The other thing that I would suggest is to journal. Um, I can't express that enough. And I know it seems very silly and it goes back to the whole, you know, macho thing again. It doesn't seem very sexy. It's to so there early, isn't girl, it? Right? <laughs> but but by doing that, you're going to experience a lot of things, right? How do I feel right now? Why do I feel this way? You know, what are some of the strengths behind this emotion and feeling? What are some of the weaknesses behind this, this, this feeling, this emotion? And by just doing those things, sometimes you can, you can figure a lot of, a lot of things out, right? Uh -huh. um, the other thing that I'm going to, that I'm going to throw into the mix here is I'm going to say, Bring it on. yeah, let's just keep going. I'm going to say that. In many cases, when you're trying to figure out what your true purpose and passion is in life. and you How do we that, know? Well, here's the thing. When you want and desire the outcome of those things as much as breath itself, mm. then you know. And some of the best ways of actually getting through this. So I already talked about reaching out to others. Right. Um, why Second was journaling. Yeah, while you're figuring these things out, uh, serve. And I know it seems so simple just to say serve, but when you serve, when you truly serve others, when you're still searching for your own path in life, a lot of times those experiences in themselves will give you the answers that you seek. 
Exactly. Exactly. So, and, and those things in, in themselves, I'm continuously developing myself. Right. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's ever changing, right? Your why should be something that obviously is deep rooted, but it should continuously evolve based on your circumstances. Exactly. And um, at the end of the day, just serving others, seeing other people um, achieve sure. goals and dreams. Absolutely, right? It, it, it immediately starts to reflect on your own mind and, and heart and soul. And so that, that in itself has truly helped me in life to, to shift my focus from woe is me, right? My internal grief into the other things that I can do in this world with the talents that I've been gifted with. So. Blessings. Amen. I hope, I hope uh, our, our audience, if I, I can't see if there's any questions or not, can you see if there's any questions? I, I can't because of how okay. I share Exactly. It. But, but, so if there are answer, any questions. Yeah, we'll answer questions that actually. We will. We <laughs> will. And I know uh, knowing you and the way we have just like uh, we meshed from the beginning. And then it was like, let's talk. But we didn't talk until our talk. I mean, we were supposed to be on the phone for what, 15 minutes? Yeah. past an hour and we were still talking and talking it was just like so many things working and i know we're going to have opportunities to work together and do so much more to bring value to your organization that you support my nonprofit for the motherless children mm -hmm. uh, manny's uh, our clients together but branding and knowing that we are here to bring value and make a difference. Absolutely. Brand and make a difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. At the end of the day, um, as, as, as I was even stating, it's so much more. Your life and your business is so much more than just skill set. Truly yeah. focus on heart set and mindset, and you'll achieve all of the other things that you want in life. Amen. So I know you have an offer. Would you like to share your offer? Yeah, so, and whoever uh, is here, by all means, Robert and I, we're here for you. And if you see and hear what what resonates with you, contact Robert. Yeah. So two two ways that you can get in touch with me. Um, one would be a direct phone number. I'm not afraid to get that out. Of course, I get all the spam calls like like all of us <laughs> do in life. But if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So. Yeah. Um, you can you can reach out to me directly and try to set up something at 864-680-3952. And we'll put that number in the... Yeah, so 680-3952. You can also book me at Robert Max Wall. That's M-A-X-W-A-L-L. -L. So Robert Max Wall dot you can book dot me. And... <laughs> Yep, robertmaxwell.youcanbook.me. Uh, feel free to set up an initial consultation. I love meeting people. It's truly all about serving, as I stated before, and it's about relationships before transactions. Mm. Not emphasize that enough. Um, and so those are the way uh, to contact me. And for everyone that's actually interested, um, when you do reach out, even if it's in Messenger, Facebook Messenger, obviously, if you're watching this on Facebook, then uh, in two weeks when we launch the branding you because you are the product um, we have a boot camp that we're launching and we actually help people build their brand around those initial phases of their story uh, that they actually have to share that'll make them obviously more marketable to their client base and so um so yeah we're going to offer that to everyone for absolutely free uh, yeah. that watches uh, your program it's normally $299 and uh, it's my gift to you. Thank you. And there's a word for that, right? Um, uh, my gift to you. Uh, do they have to say a word or do they have to oh, type a word? Actually, uh, mindset. 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 Yeah, if they just put mindset in there. I'll, I'll typically know where. Okay. Where that goes. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. So but thank you again so much for having me yes. on, thank you for being in the introduction. You mentioned, you know, the fact that we're, we're a friend and that is so true. Um, it is all about relationships in life. And um, I read something the other day that I just wanted to, to, to kind of end with. 
and uh, it's from um, Paulo Coho. If you've heard of oh. some of his stuff, yeah. Um, and I wrote it on my board, so that's why I'm looking over here. But you drown not by falling into a river, but by staying submerged in it. I love that. It just really resonated with me. And that's absolutely so true. Um, you may feel like you're drowning, but if you choose to move past it, to, to swim out of your particular situation, to reach out for help and grab a hand, um, then you don't have to drown, right? It's, um, you do not have to stay submerged in the river. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate and for it. all the audience and whoever is watching, um, by all means, you can always contact me at Lisa B at Heal Within and or right here on Messenger Me. And I'm here to help you overcome your anxieties and fears so that you stand up for the best version of you. Mm. Mm. I love, it. I love yeah. it. Thank you. Definitely reach out to Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thank you for this. We went just a tad over, but you know what? This is what uh, good energy is all about. For all our viewers, thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next week on Heal Talk Tuesdays. Thank Until you. then, God bless you and may the universal light surround you. God bless. Thank you.